You talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Well, then who the hell else are you talking to? Talking to me? No funny how. I mean, funny like no clown. I'm Peter Vinkman. We all go a little mad sometimes. Man that doesn't spend time in this family can never be a real man. Yeah. I'm kind of a big deal. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Hello and welcome to Frame by Frame. I am Stephen Radford and next to me is... I'm B. Lewin. And this is um, a chance for us to, to not just talk about films but to talk about... Uh, filmmaking as well or anything that's to do with the the, the films that we love and the films that we kind of interested yeah. in and, yeah uh, we've just recently watched the babadook oh we we didn't just watch it wow. we lived it man oh man did we and but before we discussed the film yes what really intrigued us was we saw the trailer yes because i was so impressed by n- not just the way the trailer's put together but the feel that it that it yeah. gave me Where'd you get this? On the shelf. If it's in a word or it's in a look, you can't get rid of the Babadook. A rumbling sound, then three sharp knocks. Babadook-duck-duck. That's when you'll know he's around. You'll see him if you look. Nothing bad's gonna happen, Sam. Did he think that about my dad before he died? Who sees things as they are, that one? I promise to protect you if you promise to protect me. Oh, my God. Did he hurt anyone? The boy has significant behavioural problems. This monster thing has got to stop, all right? It's just a book. It can't hurt you. Stalking me and my child. You can't get rid of the Baba Dog. You can bring me the boy. You can bring me the boy. You can bring me the boy. did notice there was a big difference between the US release trailer and the UK release trailer. The UK release trailer starts off with, uh, and spoilers, um, with the book arriving on the doorstep. Right. So that's, yeah, quite halfway through the film. Yeah, which kind of, in a way, they kind of cheated cheated the UK audience to think that it's a book that just arrived on the doorstep from the very beginning, from the get-go. Right. It was just slightly different, although they kind of used the same tropes as the as the u.s trailer but just that one significant thing kind of so that was just the, that's the main difference yeah the main right, difference okay. and I, I was just quite surprised at that because i thought well why I, I don't like it when a trailer kind of makes you think that you, you, something happens in a specific way but then when you watch the film it doesn't happen in that way that, i think that because it's a very yeah. unusual they didn't need to... Whoever put the trail together, and I don't know if it was the director herself who... That would have been a distributor. Do you think... That yeah. would have been... 
I don't, well, I don't, sometimes the yeah. directors do the trailers, otherwise sometimes they just go to a, they a would company do, that do that specifically, don't they? For some reason, either because of the length of it, yeah. they had to make it shorter for, for the UK. Because there's, there's no reason to do that. I know, the not anymore. The film doesn't need that Not all. anymore. They don't even need to change the titles anymore. Like they used to 20 years ago. Yeah. But now nowadays, it, there is no need to have so many different uh, variations. Hmm. It just so happens that the US trailer is exactly the same as the one in Italy. Just right. just with an Italian dub, that's it. Right. So that's exactly the same. Well, the, one, one thing I think that's interesting, because I was so impressed with the trailer... It's almost wired into my DNA now to think the film is going to be a complete letdown now. Yeah. That's how I felt. And it, this is why this is why I thought it's, it's important to talk about this, because I was blown away by the film. That's yeah. one of the best horror films I've seen in a long, long time. It's, it's so... The, the trailer doesn't give you everything. No. God, but no, it, it doesn't. But it certainly gives a lot. But in a, in a, it, it drip feeds it to you. It yeah. doesn't slam you with everything and, and doesn't use every single scare in the, in the whole two hours. It doesn't extract everything that's a scare and throw it into this kind of a big machine of, of thrill-seeking mess that all these other trailers seem to give you. Yeah, it, it, it just does the film justice because watching the film... It's it's not that kind of what we're so used to now in in horror is is that other people have said this so it's not my words but the horror films that come out now are not horror films for people who are fans of horror. No, no, they're just people who want to go there and go. Oh, it's quiet, it's quiet. Oh no, that, that scared me. Quiet, quiet. Ah, it's it's it, the haunted house. It's the haunted house popcorn thriller. This is just a film that if you let it, it just. Gets in you. It gets in Get under your, your skin. skin. Yeah, exactly. That's what it's all about. They the tingles up the spine moments. The you know the subversion of oh, I know, what you expect is going to happen because you've just been drip fed rubbish for the past so long, and it's not. That's not what happens. No, you know, no. what you think's going to happen doesn't happen. Do you know why? Because it's centred around the characters so much more. It follows them in their natural lives. There's humour in it that I didn't expect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the bingo calling and the the just all these little things that happen in it that are just just building tension that have nothing to do with the Babadook. It's to do with the relationship with the mother and the, the yeah, son. Yeah, absolutely. And they have because it it twists halfway through. But for the first, I'd say, third of the movie. Mm. She's terrified of her own son, and that's a that's that's a hard, awful yeah. thing to but it, to portray. It, it, it really opens up the whole idea of of domestic abuse, mental abuse, uh, that kind of thing. How how easily there are moments where you think she's gonna strike him. Yeah. There's a moment where she's gonna lose it, and she's going to harm him. More though, than most solely of it, because she is that scared of him, and, and there, there is this little telling moment, and it's all in the uh, in the mannerisms. You know when the doctor starts prescribing the uh, the the drug that will help him sleep. Yeah, that's there's a so... moment of relief in her eyes. Yeah. like it all, and you're so with her in that. It's like this moment you're going to be. I can't believe it. Tonight I'm going to be able to sleep for the first time, and I just can't wait to get these drugs down yeah. my kid. That because that's so wrong. It's so wrong, but at but, that time you just think, "Good on you." Yeah. <laughs> what? Was, You'll probably think we're familiar with that when your kid turns up, but yeah. Exactly, For me, because yeah. I'm watching out, thinking, "Oh God, that's an awful thing to do." But they, they, this happens. I mean, if you think about it, in, it's a human, uh, it's a human it's a, thing to it's do. It's a human thing to do because you know when you really have absolutely no way out, and um, and then we'll. Uh, I think, in some respects, that happened here. You yeah, know, that with, kind of thing. You, they're so open now, doctors, to put ADHD, you know, put a label to a child and prescribe yeah. them drugs. It's so easy to do now, instead of just deal with the actual problem. Yes. Just to drug the kid up and get rid of the problem. Exactly. But the, the other thing about this film is that you really get the, the real sense of how everybody else is reacting yeah. to her. I mean, the, the, the woman, when, as soon as she actually asks for help, she tells her the truth and asks for help. The other, what the woman says, I'm sorry, I just haven't got time for you today. Yeah, I've just got to go. They don't care, you know. People saying, you, "Well, your husband died seven years ago. Get over it." Yeah, everything is so real and to yeah. the point, and that, and it makes you think. It's so relatable. 
the reality is such a real script. I can't believe oh, it's how fantastic. It's so good. It's it's phenomenal. It is. And we talked about all the the real the human aspects of it. Yeah. But going to the supernatural oh, aspects yeah. of the film. There's that. <laughs> <laughs> that book. Oh, what kind yeah. of twisted genius came up with that book? Uh, it, it was very. Uh, was it um, Commode who said Mark Commode who actually likened it, the book to the the darker side of Tim Burton? You know, it's, yeah. the, it's the melancholy of melancholy death of Oyster Boy and those those really dark, um, unmarketable, yeah, uh, unmarketable uh, images yeah. that were uh, were in his head that he never actually was you know uh, the Babadook is probably uh, his wet dream yeah. it would be totally um, you know how he didn't think of this one first I don't know but I'm glad he didn't because imagine imagine Johnny Depp being the guy who arrives with flowers and then taking over they the film they need to stop that <laughs> so, yeah those two need to be split up Split up, split up. You now. go, Come you on. go over there. You go over there. <laughs> yeah. Don't talk to him, and you just get on with making films, and you just, just find another pr- pretty French girl. And uh... yeah, what's happened to Depp? Bless him. Uh, I, I don't know. He's, he's okay. He's, he's, he's Depp. I know he's got a French villa to pay for. I guess you know. And child support. <laughs> child support. <laughs> Damn it. But anyway, that's off book. But imagine if it was a Tim Burton film. Imagine if it was every anybody but it was it the is it Jennifer? Is the no the director Jennifer Kent? <laughs> the de- yes, who uh, you know she she first time first film and it, I mean, she did a short before this called Monster. Yes, now that short was in black and white, ten minutes long, um, pretty much um, the, the same story, just shot yeah, in a very different much. way. The kid was very high energy and slightly different story in the respect. That when the monster shows itself, she knows it. Yeah. She just screams and sends it back to its room. Yeah. Which and is a great twist. That's a great little. Never, never seen that before. No, you know, it's like no. go back to your room, and then at the end she gives it milk. Yeah. And it's like it's brilliant. It becomes d- docile and domesticated monster, which is kind of the twist on any story because nobody ever expects that. No. Which I thought it was quite clever. It was, and it's in the story. In the it, going back to the the actual Babadook, uh, you can never get rid of the Babadook. It says that. So instead of getting rid of it, they live with it. They live with it. Oh, exactly. That's so, great. I've never. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it, it, ultimately, every single film has to have a have a resolution, and and I was really glad that the third act of that film of Babadook doesn't go into the usual place where all the other films go like insidious when they starts to go into that whole dream thing and uh it starts to become like uh, nightmare on elm street in a way yeah well I, uh, yeah with insidious it was more like poltergeist to me where Polter- yeah yeah they have to go to the realm to go into the realm and because up back. until that insidious got some quite good shocks the, you know, is, the little yeah. behind the, you know, when it's behind the behind the shoulder yeah. little thing that I weren't expecting. It was like, wow, you know. But then great. now that now that Babadook has happened, if you look at films like Insidious, they did nothing with the character development in those films. No. None of these films have character development. This one does. It's 100% raw and it's it's award nominated perfection when it comes to the cat. Yeah, well, you were saying that earlier about um, the actress, Essie Davis. Essie Davis, yeah, yeah. She's fantastic. She's done a lot of Australian... She's done a lot of Australian television and she is quite a veteran. But she reminded me a little bit of Close Encounters, the the, the woman with the the little boy. Um, A little bit of her in there. Yeah, that's an interesting comparison. Almost as, as if Steven Spielberg, they get so far with the character development and then they just stop they don't want to go any further. But this film just kept on developing them all the way through, would not leave the characters alone. No. And that is, that's the way it should be. I think that's what's missing in a lot of these films. But then again, if every film was like the Babadook, then... Yeah, exactly. It wouldn't be such a profound would, movie now, would it? It wouldn't be impressive. Well, because obviously this had a, this, had, this film actually really had an effect on me with that, that evening after watching the film. Mm. Um, I actually had a nightmare with the Babadook in it. This is not that's not happened to me for a long, long time. Probably since um, I watched The Exorcist in the cinema when it was re-released. Because I'd seen it before, but seeing it in the cinema affected me again. You know. Yeah. 
And um, yeah, I was just lying there, just sort of turned over and looked in the doorway leading to where the bathroom is. And I could, the Babadook was there. And then I just woke up again and I was thinking, God, this film has really got under my skin. Yeah, yeah, That's exactly. Fun. Oh, love it. It, it that's, and that's the whole po- the whole point of a movie like this. It's got to it's got to stay with you. And really, you do see the Babadook, but you don't really see it. It's never like a true reveal, is it? Well, Which, you know what he looks like because he's in the book. Yeah, but you don't. The, the the kid explains it. You know, he he doesn't show himself. He'll scare you first, and then, you know, it's it, yeah. And the bond the she has between a son in it, because obviously, as the film progresses, it goes from her being scared of her son to her son being terrified of her, mm. because yes. the Babadook sort of gets inside of her, doesn't it? And, Which is um, exactly what the, I mean. It, but he does not leave her side. He does not waver. You know, he he's committed to, her, to staying with his, his, his mum which I don't know I found that incredibly touching and, the, and you know because of the son she gets it out of her you know in that quite graphic mm. thrown up all that kind of blood <laughs> moment you know and oh she's so good oh. so when she's drugged um, the kid's been drugged and has fallen you know fast asleep now um, that's when things that's when the supernatural element really flips then, is that's where it takes over, because previous to that, the book scared her, she doesn't like the book, so she's ripped the book up and thrown yes. it away. It's after that deep sleep, isn't it, where she comes round and there's those knocks on the door, she goes to the door, there's no one there. Then there's knocks on the door again, she goes in the book's there, and there's been pieced back together. Yeah, it's only when he's asleep that she really starts to yeah. experience everything. But there's something odd about the transition state of her emotion and because she I mean that the the director really focused in on her every moment mm. that it's, it's almost as if there are no transitions there are no cuts with this with this woman's life um, even when she's sleeping they transition through from night to day yeah in a kind of a kind of like a, a, a they, it's almost as if they never cut away from her. She's always at the centre. The boy is not. She is at the centre yeah. of that movie. And in fact, it's, is, she, is she in every frame of that movie? Pretty much, apart from when the kid is interacting with, with the children. Or, yeah. But, but oh, but it, 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 there, there's not a single moment is left without putting... I mean, a transition of going from night to day could have easily have just been go to sleep, wake up, it's daytime. Hmm. But instead, she just... She just time lapsed the whole thing in this kind of elegant thing that that felt like it felt. I mean, even that felt freaky in itself. Yeah. And uh, that, that's that's just using every single moment that she had to to and pulling something out of it rather than just letting it go as nothing. Transitions can often be quite a thankless thing. Oh, just we just need to go from there to there. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, it's just, but it's a lazy way of getting from one point to another. Yeah, just a cut. But yeah. no, no, no. She, she said every single transition is is important. Every single sleep that she had, the fact that she can actually have a sleep, the moment that he was drugged, she just slowly, elegantly went into the bed. That's a great, like that. that's a great shot. We've all felt that when you're exhausted, and you feel like the bed, oh, you just slow motion right into bed, and you she go to sleep. She came down. She was happy. Yeah. For the first time in the whole film, because her son is asleep. It's, it's it is wrong, but it is so right in that moment. You kind of feel relieved for her. Yeah, there's so much to talk about this film, and I think that that it's it's something that will be a classic. Yeah, I hope they don't make a sequel. They will. If if it no. makes no, they will. If it makes enough money, it'll no. be Babadook two. Babadook two, and it'll be a different. Or do you think? Oh no, America will remake it. Of course, because it's Australian. Try or do a prequel origin story of who the, who wrote the book. Someone's bound to do that. Yeah, because I know um, it's number ten this yeah. week, which it's not massive, it's not popular, but it's in the top ten in the UK. So yeah. that's something. A little indie film coming from Australia is in the top ten in the UK. Yeah. That's something. Yeah. It's not going to go to number one. Think about Blair Witch. Mm. I was more terrified when they lost the map <laughs> because of the reaction that the girl had to the guy who was 
nagging her and nagging her about that map and the look in her eyes that when she you, you was she was seeing blood she was seeing blue murder yeah you could you just felt the tension from the acting from the performances the supernatural doesn't add to that yeah again and in some respects that was the brilliance of the, of the boy a witch and the way they shot it yeah because they were in they were sort of in that situation weren't they the people that were the, yeah. the directors of that film were like getting them lost yes. and terrifying them at night time so yeah. they, it's it's a real emotion that like what she's having there is exactly. real it's this caught on real camera emotion. it's real the director's got that, those mm. performances because they were actually in that because they really believed it yeah they were in that but with this she's, the director's got the performance out of her actors yeah just by directing them exactly so they're not in that you know they're just acting where was the exposition in this film yeah where was Morgan Freeman where was Morgan <laughs> Freeman <laughs> but exposition that, that there was no yeah there wasn't there was the... no there was no exposition man in this Nothing. I guess, I guess it was a very simple story. They didn't really need to explain it, but there was no. Where did the book come from? There was no. They didn't go into that. They just dealt with what what it was there and then. It didn't matter. It was just there. Yeah. We all accepted it as being there that it existed. Why was it on a shelf already? Exactly, because she'd never seen the book before. Where'd you get this from? Oh, it was just on my shelf. Done with. Done with. <laughs> Move on. Morgan Freeman would have come on. Well, you've seen that there was that moment in time when... Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> when the book was brought to life by the seed that was planted in the basement. <laughs> and, uh, so there you go. I mean, that that was Babadook. And, uh, and I think that... Um, I don't. I think it's probably going to be a long time before we watch something well, that's this that is, good. Yeah. This is what worries me slightly. Where I've been reading a few comments saying that they were bored watching this film no. yeah, yeah bored bored and i mean oh, this, this is, is what this is what scares me because they're so used to the endless rubbish that's been shoved in the face now of all that it's quiet it's quiet it's quiet bang it's quiet it's quiet it's quiet bang but then moment. there's but there's there's hardly any music in this film i mean there is underscore but there's but, it's more but ambience the and they're like bored. if halloween came out now people wouldn't watch it they, people they think, think it'd be boring, boring. And yeah. it's not. It's all about the atmosphere. It's all about the, the the situation that these characters are in. There's no way out. They can't get out of the, the hell that they're in, and it's just getting worse and worse. But how? Uh, okay, let's try and get into the mind of of a of of somebody who would go to see Babadook. They're sitting there. They're bored. Why are they bored? Because because nothing's bouncing around. Yeah, the room. No, nothing's jumped out of them yet. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't want to think. Don't... I don't want to go. I don't want to go watch a film and think. I want to go watch a film. The, the film will do all the thinking for me. That but seems yeah, they... to be why people. I don't. I just can't get into the mindset of someone going in to watch this film and not immediately being just Sucked in the story. Yeah, absolutely. Are these the same people who who think that EastEnders is exciting? I don't know. I think we need a demographic. I mean, are the people are, are who are the people who actually say it's boring? If um, you're one um, of the people that have watched the Babadook and found it boring, please write in and explain yourself. Yeah, tell me what your your list of of top ten movies are. Is I'll be curious. I want to see what that list is and the top ten TV shows because it's a telling sign. I think it really is a telling sign that you know there, there's so much stuff. That is that has to be bouncing around the walls. That have to be explaining things, repeating things over and over again. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I'm sorry, but, but you know, calm down, people. Relax. Look at the film for what it is and go into it. Don't let it. They're, yeah. they're saying the same thing about the uh, games, um, such as um, the most amazing games that have been out in the last ten years. The Last of Us, which is an apocalyptic uh, zombie film um, game. Which is more cinematic than it is gameplay. It's more, it's more getting into the, following the characters around and letting them explore more than actually running around and going crazy. Right. Same with Alien Isolation. Nobody has a gun in that, and the uh, the whole premise of the game is to survive, not being killed by an alien. And a lot of it's just, uh, someone has said that the, a lot of the game is just them op trying to open un unlock doors, trying to get from one room to another. Right. Okay. Put yourself in the reality of the situation. That is exactly what you probably we be doing mm. um so get yourself into that get into the atmosphere it's about going into a dark room and there not being anything there 
but you just have to wonder, is it? Yeah, it, Don't, it's the people yeah. though who like we just if you use Halloween as the example. It's the people who mm. don't like May nineteen seventy eight Halloween, but love the Rob Zombie version of Halloween. Because the the brilliance yeah. of Halloween, and I don't want to harp on about it, is one of my favorite films. Is there's no reason he's evil. He just wants to. He just wants to murder. There's no reason. Be, there's no reasoning behind it. You, you don't need an origin story. Yeah, he just he's just evil, and he wants to kill. There you go. Get on with it. That that to me is more terrifying yeah. than what Rob Zombie does. Is giving this whole backstory of. He was beaten by his, his father was his ar- arsehole who beat him and his mum was, was a junkie and he's come from this horrible life. And he's it's the Jeremy Kyle call. story because everybody can relate to the whole an episode of Jeremy Kyle. <laughs> so they put that into that movie because they, they have to kind of relate to that uh, idea of him being just like a normal family. Well, those people broken. are wrong and we are right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> People that are not comfortable with experiencing the raw depth of emotion that comes across as an unexpressed thought. Right. People want things to be said, spoken, loudly, expressed, communicated. When a film is basically struggling, uh, to them, the film is struggling because it's not communicating to them every chance that this woman has in the film to communicate her problem is being ignored and is being uh, led back to a sense of reality that people are uncomfortable with because they want they want mm. people to kind of get flighty and, and get into the supernatural straight away. Again then, it's just a testament to her as a director to be able to have complete control over her own film. Without worrying about, yeah. Yeah, um, people saying, oh no, you, need, you, should, you should be explaining where this book's come from. Why, is, why has this yeah. happened? Why can't you get rid of it? Why, explain. No. Where no. did the book come from? Who wrote the book? Can we see him? We want to see. We want to see the author of the book. Yeah. Um, Some crazy guy who puts the hex on a book. I don't know, but yeah, you they, don't need it. You don't need it. The, the Michael, Michael Bay does Babadook. Michael Bay Babadook. That would be insane. <laughs> the like, masturbation scene would probably still be in it, though. Yes, but it would have a guy there watching her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just it'll just have it'll just have it'll be it'll be Paul Reiser who's a window cleaner, uh, yeah, or, or or Matthew Lawrence who's who's just there to fix something. You see, you know, they basically would would add stuff that they'll be pointless that would have nothing to do with the actual plot. Yeah. Well, anyway, going back to it, it, the reason obviously we actually spent money and went watching this film is because we were impressed by the trailer. Yeah. Now this led me to think films that. You went to see because you, you, the trailer was so fantastic and then mm-hmm. the film was a complete disappointment. Yeah, now... Think that, about that. The yes. first one that sprang to my mind straight away was the 1998 Godzilla. Right, yeah. The uh, Was that the teaser trailer with the guy who was fishing? Yeah. You know, he, yeah, he was like fishing and, mm. you know, and then this big wave starts to form. And then he's had to run away, and the, the, you know the the pier that he's on is getting smashed off, and this thing's coming up, it's coming up, and then you just boom, size does matter, and then you just see this eye in front of those other two fishermen just open, it goes off, and I thought I need to see that film. Yes, that is fantastic, and the film's rubbish. Yeah, <laughs> because it, and it, look at that film to see what led it down. Um, they had to have a, a crazy reporter who had to be in the center of every single scene. Uh, and then you've you've got you've got all these other extra characters in there who were just simply uh, faces and names to make the make the film go. Yeah, and of course, little dinosaurs. Oh, it was just Jurassic Park. Little little dinosaurs. In Central Park. It was, was it not Central Park. Where was it? <laughs> Central Park? Jurassic Park. Yeah. Yeah, it was Jurassic Park. Where did they end up? Madison Square Garden is where oh, they ended up, wasn't it? Oh yes, well, yeah, Madison Square Park. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Oh, it was a massive misstep because they were on. It was the um, Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin, weren't they? There was this partnership that couldn't fail. They thought they'd Stargate. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I enjoy Stargate. Independence Day is a guilty pleasure for me. I think it's still. I like. I know it's a bit popcorn tastic, but it, it, it is. But do you know what? That is shamelessly. Um, it doesn't try to be anything more or less. No, it doesn't. No. Okay, so yeah, going off these films, yeah. Um, what's something that's definitely close to your heart? The Prometheus. The trailer to the film. Trailer to the film. The trailer was 
the trailer reeks of alien, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, because they, 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 they have the same, same thing. thing. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. words very slowly. <laughs> yeah, and it builds tension and. Yeah, yeah, it, it had to do the same because yeah. that's what that's what uh, everybody who's a fan of the original they could get away with that for the trailer, but they still need to have that in the movie. Mm. They didn't sell that in the movie. They, they. I mean, I, I can't get over Prometheus because of the, uh, the, 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 the typical gets get a group of people together. I mean, we can talk about the Alien films as a whole series of, of unqualified idiots brought together on on a mission of highest importance, yeah. just just get slaughtered. Yeah, and I think the Alien films are something we should discuss in another podcast, definitely. Definitely, because that is a big Yeah, but exclusively thinking of the Prometheus trailer and how excited I was from seeing that. Yeah. To being disappointed after watching the film. Yeah, I, 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 I just really think that it tried too hard to please everybody. Mm. And, yeah. Okay, do you want another one? Go on, throw me another one. Okay. You got a list? Yeah, I did He's a list. a list over there? He's got a list. I prepared. He's okay, prepared. this is pretty, um, this is an obvious one really, but Star okay. Wars Episode 1. The trailer was good. It was. The trailer was was really good. Do you remember me and how excited you were when you saw Darth Maul and you did that and then the dual lay? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember thinking that was going to be so good. Yeah. Instead yeah, of watching was... a film about trade dealerships. <laughs> <laughs> trade dealerships. <laughs> I learned a lot. Do you know what? Now now I can actually go on to the open market and I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I understand politics because of it. But episode did, one. Yeah, because yeah. I, 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 I don't consider myself a Jedi by religion. I call myself Trade Federation by right. name. Yeah, I'm a trader. Exactly. And, uh, well, it, it's, a, it's a lot better than being a construction worker on the Death Star. <laughs> so, but, um, but yeah, episode one was... Cause the film is dreadful, absolutely dreadful. When, but the but trailer did, but when was you watched quite it, excited. when you watched it the first time before before the whole culture of hating Star Wars Episode One, was it as bad as it was until uh, if, if you watched it now with this whole planetary hatred of a film and a culture that is just destroyed it? Would you look at it differently now than you would do if you'd have watched it? Without the internet, without well, when I I watched it reference. going into it cold when I first watched it, yeah, I was lucky enough to do that. I, the internet wasn't as massive as it is now back then, like because how long was it? About fifteen years ago, nineteen ninety seven, I think. Right, because I remember because when I was, I was so excited, obviously, and there yeah. was no feeling in the world of what come on the screen. It just comes out a long time in the galaxy, far, far away. Yeah, nothing else can give you that feeling. It hits you, and you're like, oh. I'm, I'm going to watch a Star Wars film. It's exciting. Yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm by no means a massive Star Wars fan. I, I enjoy them, but I, you know, I was when I was younger. You grow up and you find better films, don't you? You know, but yes. Um, I remember just walking out of it, just thinking, oh. Apart from the fight at the end, that was just boring. Boring. Just, yeah, it was yeah. boring, and because of walking and talking and yeah, and, and the kid was so annoying in it. I didn't find the kid annoying actually in the film. It oh, was... I did. You, like the end when he all these. Sh- oh God, I hate Lucas. When he, you know, when he's got in a. I'm not sure. He gets in a spaceship at the end, doesn't it? And he's like, oh, what does this button do? Boop, boop. <laughs> oh, and he's killing all the bad guys that are trying to get at him by accident and stuff. I remember just watching it through, you know, the through <laughs> face palm. Yeah, my through grip fingers just over my eyes and just thinking this. Is not because you're scared, yeah. but because you're just disappointed. But very, very disappointed. But Jar Jar Binks is was the, was the obvious character that really ruined the whole yeah. the whole of the film because you knew going out of that film that he was just annoying son of a bitch that they didn't need <laughs> to have. It was uh, and no, but we don't need the internet to tell you that anymore. No. Please, internet, calm down. We get it. It's like with it's like M Night Shalamalamalamalam. We get it. We get it. You don't like him. You don't like his movies. You don't care about what he brings out, even though it's probably true. Um, I just such a shame with him because he has such promise. I know we're going off topic now, but yeah, Six Sense is a great. I enjoyed it's that. Still, we're still on film. topic. We're completely on topic because yeah. it's about the. It's it's also about the trailers. I mean, if you looked at the trailer for Lady in the Lady in the Water, 
Lady, yeah, Lady in the Lake, is it? Or Lady, Lady in, in the, the Lake, Water. Lady in the Water. You see, even the even the title doesn't really matter anymore. I mean, it's just the the trailer itself was was quite a disappointing trailer because it, it really didn't didn't it it sold you it sold you the idea of a, of a woman living in somebody's pool and that there no, wait, was wait. A, a magical. Listen. Listen. That's so interesting. I am with that film. There's a woman living in a pool. Can you hear time clicking? <laughs> Bye. And it's funny because I didn't watch the trailer until uh, until the other day. I watched it again because I, I was looking up the Shalomalam phenomenon. Shalomalam yeah. phenomenon. And I was thinking of, about what was the trailer. And all I could remember was that moment. But if you look at the trailer again, there's so much more going on. But oh. you walk out of that trailer thinking only one thing. It's a story about a woman who comes out of the water. Yeah. And that's it. The title itself tells you exactly what's going to happen. And big... Di- yeah. And unfortunately, I never... That was, the, that was the first time I actually saw a trailer for a film that I just thought, I don't want to watch it. Oh, yeah. the, t- the trailer put me off watching yeah. the film. I don't. Th- I never really watched. I don't remember watching the trailer. I remember watching the film, and just being kind of meh about it. Meh. Was, yeah, yeah. I was, I was kind of. I didn't hate it. I didn't really feel anything. I had Lady in the Water ambivalence, which is not really. You should. You should, can't put that on the. Um, <laughs> the advertising of the film, can you? Not really ambivalence. <laughs> yeah, this film gave me ambivalence. Like it created a new emotion <laughs> that, that was led dormant until this moment in time. Yeah, that's... Yeah. So, here's another film then. Okay, about... is this on your list? Yeah, Superman Returns. Again, I saw the trailer and I, I think by that time I was so bored. I'm, I'm actually quite bored and fed up of superhero movies. Mm. So I just couldn't be bothered. Really? Yeah. Because... Um, to me, because the trailer was quite atmospheric and you had Brando on it, and it was good to hear him again. And I kind of thought, I was in I was in there, I was like, yeah, this yeah. is going to be good, I'm going to enjoy this. Mm. But didn't you kind of think, well, haven't we been here before? Isn't this just the well, same Well, because I'm not the same as you, I really like superhero films, so I was quite excited. I'm not. Yeah. I'm more of a Marvel than a DC fan. I was excited, more, I'm, 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 I've always been excited by Batman. <laughs> no, not the actual. <laughs> yeah. Shall I? Shall I rephrase that? Uh, Batman excites me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's much better. Yeah, that's almost like me and cats in CAC three. Um, <laughs> oh, oh. But <laughs> the the films of the Batman films have always been consistently dark, and I think that I I enjoy that because Batman is a flawed character. He's a he's a wonderfully dark flawed character, and they haven't really misstepped with him. Well, Batman and Robin, sorry, yes. They yeah, have. who's your favorite Batman? Uh, it's, it's still Tim Burton. Yeah, Keaton for me. Uh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I know what you meant. Oh my God, Tim Burton's take on Batman yeah, was that's my favorite. To me, the it, it, it's it, it kept with the comic style of it, mm. the comic book style of it. Whereas the Dark Knight. Is still good, still strong. Oh, That'd be great, but why, when he gets the outfit on, he has to talk like Barry White? I just can't. Get <laughs> yes, past, it's I can't weird. get past that. I can't get past. Yeah, that. exactly. Great There's... films. They are great films, but yeah, I mean they're enjoyable. They're, they're entertaining thrill rides. But when I start to look at all the other superheroes, especially Spider Man, I mean Spider Man bores the hell out of me. I really can't. I mean. Uh, I was out before they. Yeah, they never quite got Spider Man right. Spider Man Two, I enjoyed. I thought it was a really good film, but they've never quite got him right. No, but I, I just don't see. I, I can't understand how they can make. I mean, the only way they can do it is to make him dark, um, and to get some sort of edginess behind him. But they, they can't do that because it, it's inherently not correct for Spider Man. It, it, they've got it all right. They've got the films right, even the re- remakes right, because there that is all that there is mm. to do with it. There's nothing you can... You can't take him out of that box. And in a way, Batman has so many different layers that you could peel down to because he is more of a mysterious, uh, more guarded person. Mm. Yet, you know, the whole Spider-Man thing is that he's just young and, and just too willing to please. Um everyone all the time and it gets a little bit too 
annoying yeah. to watch that again and it's like, oh, Spider-Man, okay. I, I've never, I've never appreciated Spider-Man on any level, I'm afraid. Really? Yeah, superhero-wise. Green Goblin, I, I didn't even bother with that. Green Lantern. Not oh, sure. Green, uh, yeah, Green Lantern. No, Green Goblin. <laughs> Green Goblin. It's Spider-Man, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. Um, yeah, agree. that was well. That's universally panned, is not it? Apparently, it's terrible. They're going to bring it back, though. I think twenty eighteen. Yeah, but I think this, oh, twenty nineteen is going to be another Green Lantern film. Yeah, and and I, I think that it's just simply you know a, a super, to me superhero films just they they all kind of come across and I mean they are all formulaic in the same sense that they are people a person who um, who has some sort of a power. Or gains a power, or and, and inherently decides to design a costume, because that's the only thing they they can really do, is wear a costume and then fight crime. That to me, it, it's just. Well, yeah, but they, if you, no, mm. I don't. No, I like it, especially the Marvel. I'm really into the Marvel universe at the minute. Is that the Shield, the Marvel Agents of Shield, that kind of thing, or the well, that's Avengers, the TV series, isn't it? But yeah, all the Avengers and stuff. I love it. X Men. Yeah, I'm into X Men. X Men's different though. To me, that doesn't. I don't see that as being. They have a certain skill and then they have a costume. Yeah, the the mutants. They're mutants. And, and there's a great like political thing there, isn't? Yeah, there, there is. Yeah. Isn't... But then Marvel are going to go into that. They're um, doing a Civil War storyline. That's going to go in after the next Avengers film. Have you seen the trailer for Avengers: Age of Ultron? No, I haven't. Looks fantastic. But yeah, what happens is yeah. because of the events of this, um, there's all these people popping up with all these superpowers now. So the government's saying anyone who's got a power need to come forward and tell us who you are and you've got a power. Get an idea. And Captain yeah. America is dead against that, but <laughs> Iron Man is dead for it. So now them two fight each other. There's a big civil right. war, which is I'm really looking forward to. See, that is interesting because yeah. then at least they're you need actually to get going into it. I think I think it's okay. I'm I'm just don't give me okay. It's fantastic. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm not a I'm come yeah. on, Jim. <laughs> Recently, I've gone straight back to Iron Man one and watched them all in sequential order. Did it I, get better? It was yeah, it's great because yeah. all the characters that pop up later on, they're all at the beginning. They've, yeah. they've committed to the storyline and the way they've done it is fantastic. I'm you really... just don't notice it when you're actually watching them one-on-one. Yeah, one-on-one. exactly. And then, yeah, yeah, it's just so good the way they've done it and now it's getting darker and, you know, the shit's going to hit the fan now. It's, I'm, I'm loving it. And all the, you know, the tech that Tony Stark has created with the Iron Man costume and in Iron Man 3 he has drones that, you know, obviously don't need people in it. Um, that, technology becomes self-aware so he's the one who's created the bad guy who's going to be in age of ultron right i think that's a great little well, idea yeah. that's great that's and I do, I do like the idea of the of the world kind of just all working together in separate films and then coming together as one mm. um they, they do that they they've they've done that on purpose though there must be some sort of a scheme that a schematic that they're working from a framework, most likely from the comic books that sell. Yeah, I think as... yeah they've obviously borrowed, yeah. you know, taking storylines out of the comics and appropriating it for, yeah. you know, this. But they didn't know it was going to work, did they? They must have had a, a rough idea how they're going to go, and now they, these films are the most popular films in the world now. It seems to be that they, if they are working in that way and they are getting everything right, that they've actually got the, the consistent people working on it. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. So they're not leaving the project and having somebody else come in playing around with it and then throwing it in the wrong direction yeah and I think that part of the they're picking directors that you wouldn't have really thought to like using Joss Whedon for the Avengers film I think was a gamble because he's never really up until that point he never really had many really successful films out you know Serenity didn't do well even though it's incredible and you know He's just been more of a TV thing. All the nerds love him, obviously. But yeah. But then he's made the third biggest grossing film of all time with Avengers, and now he's doing Avengers: Age of Ultron. Who'd have? And then they use James Gunn to do Guns of the Galaxy, which you haven't watched and you need to watch because it's just <laughs> fantastic. It's just a space opera. It's brilliant. Yeah. I Anything I... I want in a film like that, it was. It was like someone said. You know that that weird guy who come from Wigan. He lives in Manchester now. That Andy guy. Let's make a film just for him. Yeah, and they've done Guardians that. Guardians of the Galaxy came out. Which brilliant. I, we'll discuss that once Stevens watched it. Maybe, maybe I need to actually go on a on a on a vision quest. 
um, to to basically go through every single one of me. I mean, I, I did I did watch the Captain America film, and I did enjoy that. The first one. The the one yeah. where he's a little weedy man and yeah, he yeah. grows yeah, into a big one, yeah. puffy man. Um, and I did enjoy that. I did get that. And that I, was actually the science nice behind the character. See. He turns into a big puffy man. Cause, <laughs> yeah. That's what Stork said. Yeah, push this button, make him puffy. <laughs> it's what it said on the button. Puff, puffy button. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that was really clever and I did enjoy that. Um, and but I, I think it's because it's the type of film that I, I'm not naturally drawn to. Mm. I'm I'm for I'm I'm more into um, into the more movie um, grim art art house kind of film. I'm very well, so am I. I, well, I, I so there's I, something very art house about a lot of these films. Maybe I'm missing the point. Yeah, you will. Just, I am yeah, missing, watch, I'm missing you the are. Point. Yeah, because I know you very well, and these are films that I know you should love. They are <laughs> like you're saying. You know, yeah. like the reason that in the first one he makes an Iron Man costume is because have you seen the first Iron Man? Yes, he gets captured and he, forced to build weapons, his own weapons to you know to send back over. Because and then there's all this you know his God, I can't think now. But he, obviously the his CEO has been selling arms to these Far East. Yeah, yeah. Groups behind his back, you know, and um, he gets captured and he has to think of a way to get out of it. And then the reason why he, he sort of builds this costume is that, not costume, is the um, suit, is to help, is to. But the, the thing about Iron Man, I mean, does he have a real heart in the beginning? And does he. Because whatever that, that thing that. That, that does keep him shrapnel for going into his heart and killing him. Right, okay. And that. that it's an arc reaction. Is that there in, in the beginning? No, no, no. That's... He has to build that. To, to right. basically save himself when he's there been you captured. Go. So that's it. That actually happens in there. Yeah, and that Stark. Happens there. Yeah. Tony Stark is an incredibly flawed character. You know, and he's, he's a... great. But that's why I. That's why I kind of think that Spider Man is just a knob in a in a in a stupid suit. <laughs> the guy gets bitten by a spider, and then all of a sudden he he thinks, "Hey, I can crawl around like a spider. I need a suit." Let's write our own comic. Let's call it Spider Man. A knob in a suit. <laughs> well, uh, he is. Like, that, <laughs> if you compare him to Stark, who's been captured by um, by terrorists and is being forced to literally f- create a device that will keep his heart keep him, his heart going, you put him next to Spider Man, and you tell me who's who's the bigger man? Who is who is the one who's? That, actually... I'm, to- I'm totally with you. Yeah. Totally with you yeah. So I I can't invest myself in such a. Uh, um, a, a kind of a, a pointless character. Was it the first Thor film? I didn't really like when I first watched it. I've really I watched watched it again as, now. Watched oh, them it's either. really good. Is that a part of the Marvel thing? Yeah, yeah, because Thor's in it. Have you not seen Avengers? Um, oh my god. Is that the one with um, you, you, <laughs> Diana Rigg? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's Steed. <laughs> and Steed? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, Izzard was in that, wasn't he? He played one of the villains. Anyway, we're going off. <laughs> but watch it. I'm okay. telling you. Because. I will the, have a, the brilliance of Joss Whedon's yeah. scripts, especially in that, and the things you love most are subversive scripts, isn't it? It is, and it's it, everything about it is subversive. You see, some it's oh, it's a cliche. I've seen that. Oh no, it's not going to do that. It's full of that. When I've got a chance, hopefully uh, in the near future, I will get a list of all these movies, and uh, we'll just I'll just run them through. You, you could even be here if you needed to be just to kind of guide me through in case I get lost in them yeah. but we'll watch them all and then we'll do a podcast and then we'll see how my opinion has shifted I think that's a good that's a good point to finish this one I think yeah, yeah. so there is a mission ahead it might not be the next podcast it might be no we don't know what we'll talk about in the next them. one but we'll figure we something no out idea. so so the Babadook, go watch it. It's fantastic, unbelievably brilliant. And please, we need to end this podcast because if we go on, we're going to start talking about it again. And yeah. it's just, I'm, I'm just happy. I'm, I'm just happy. I'm, I'm just happy. I'm, I'm just liquid happy. storage bags. You will never get caught short again thanks to liquid storage bags. Here you get eight, that's right, eight bags in which you can store your very own liquid items. Bag on sold separately, liquid not included. The attractive cardboard box is easy to open. With each wonderfully transparent, durable and easily accessible. Ready Ready to to go! go. That's right, when you've got to go, liquid storage bags are there for you. 
Liquid storage bags? That's right! Liquid, Liquid storage, storage bags. bags! They're sleek, sturdy, and stylish. And what's more, you can write all the information you need right there on the bag, where the space is provided. Warning, do not write on liquid storage bags. Liquid storage bags cannot be found in any store, by phone, or online. So you know that liquid storage bags are the product for you. And, and only you. you. What's it called? Liquid storage bags. Ah! Oh. Oh.